Hey guys, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Java streams versus uh, Kotlin collections and sequences. And hopefully you've kind of seen Java streams before. They started in Java 8 and uh, allows you to quickly process um, lists and collections uh, in a way that's kind of similar to a functional. So I'll assume you guys have some kind of knowledge of how streams work. But let me just kind of do a quick overview of what's happening here. Um, the basics of this is it's just finding um, through a list of user info if any of those users have an Arizona address. And that's it pretty much says it right there. And you want to have your code that pretty much says exactly what it's doing. Um, so that's good. So this is a list of user info. And I have this on the right kind of describing this. And there's these substructures here. And uh, so you can kind of walk through what it does. So it goes through this entire um, list one by one. It gets the user primary user info, which is this sub part here. Um, filters down either not null, so it'll skip anything that's null. Uh, this lambda here grabs the addresses and it flat maps it to that list of addresses. So it becomes a stream of address DTOs. And it's nice that we have a little hint here IntelliJ gives us. So that is this guy here, that list of addresses. And then we filter out any of the addresses that are not residential. So those are skipped. If it's residential, we keep it. And we map to the state. And if any of them match AZ, it's an Arizona address. And it'll do that one by one for every entry in this list. So once it finds one that's AZ, it stops and returns. So that's the Java way of doing things. Now we can look at the Kotlin way of doing things, which is quite a bit easier. Um, there are some disadvantages, just in that uh, by default, it will do things for the entire list um, and not, not uh, lazy evaluate like streams do in Java. But we can show how to get around that with sequences. All right, so let's try to do the same thing in Kotlin. So first, I will create a new Kotlin file. And we don't really need to care about making the class necessarily, so let's just call it uh, Kotlin Collections Example. Okay. And we can just have standalone functions. We'll just call it uh, contains Arizona resident, just like the other one. And we'll do user info DTO. Okay. All right, so let's see how we would do this. So the idea gives us a lot of hints, which is really nice. So let's call the, let's see, user info DTO. Let's see what we have available. And we should have map. And so this is a map lambda. And it refers to the thing it's mapping. So you don't have to actually use, like in Java, where you have these uh, named uh, nomads. You, so this is the actual the the name of the um, list entry or stream entry that you're going to manipulate. In uh, Kotlin, you have a, a a shorthand where it just refers to it. So, you, but you can still do that. If I wanted to do user that, and then uh, that would be the equivalent to that line we have here. But uh, the terser syntax is just use it, which you get used to after a while, and it's pretty simple. So there you go. So this is this equivalent to the first um, two lines. So you can already see we're losing some extra verbosity here, which is nice. We don't have to type as much code. And we'll filter. Uh, let's see. Uh, null. Not equal to null. Okay, and actually there's a, 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 this is letting us know there's actually a built-in 
lambda function for this. So it'll simplify our code. So if I let it do its suggestion, there we go. So that makes it a lot easier and more idiomatic. And now we'll map to the get addresses. So that's addresses. And so that's already done. How nice. And so now we're on a list of addresses. And we'll filter um, address. So let's see, equals address. Type dot residential. Oh, whoops, I forgot to make this a flat map. So this we want to map to a list of addresses. Before we had like a, where it actually, without a flat map, we'd have a list of a list. So now it's a flat map of addresses, that's just good. So now we can go it address type equals residential. So now we only want the residential. So now we're equivalent to this point here. And as you can see, it's quite a bit less verbose code. And now we'll map to it get state, which is just that. And any, and let's see here, predicates, it would be easy equals it. All right, so this should now be equivalent to what we have on the left, provided I didn't make any mistakes. And we can verify that in a minute. All right, so to figure out if this works, let's go ahead and do what we normally do and create a test. So let's go ahead and create a test. And I don't really like doing this global cert import, so I'll delete that. All right, so let's start by creating a list of those user infos. I decided to cheat a little here and bring it up because I didn't remember all the structure. So here we go. And we'll do apply. And so this is, apply is really nice if you haven't seen it before. Apply will let you just pretty much use um, as if this is the primary user info. So you can actually set like addresses and things like that directly in there. So this is like this address is here it's referring to is actually within that object here. So it kind of it, it's these are scoping functions. We'll talk a little more about those later. Okay, add just DTO, and we'll do the same thing. So that will create 10 of these guys and they all are residential. Got a one error here. So we gotta cap this guy off. There we go. And this should now be user info list should be user info list. So now we can check and see if things do what we suppose. Okay, so now we can see if that function here 
works. So since it's a global function, we can just call it just like this, no problem. And let's assert that it's true. Let's see what happened here. Found unit. I did not return it, so here we go. And let's see, we got to make sure that's Boolean. And now we should be able to check and see if it worked. And it didn't work. And do you guys see why it didn't work? I forgot something. And I left this in the here just so you guys could see. But we did not have an Arizona state in there. So let's add that back and see what happens. So state equals AZ. And now let's see if it fixed the problem. And it did. So now we know this returns true and it finds a state in Arizona from that user info. And you can see how much uh, nicer this code is, easier to read in my opinion, than the other version. So that's this guy. Oh, and one last bit to avoid confusion. Uh, this in Kotlin uh, produces JVM code that actually calls dot equals. I just wanted to clarify that. So this is not like uh, object equality in the sense of being the same reference as it is in Java. So this will actually call the equals method. So um, for strings, and there's a lot of overloaded overloaded operators that are like that for your convenience. So don't mistaken this for me actually to check and see if it's the same exact object. So let's talk about what the problem is with this. So I added a breakpoint here um, on the map operation, the last map, before we check to see if any of it equals Arizona. And let's just run the debugger and see what happens. So okay, here we go for the first element. We're doing a map. And we go down. And as you can see here, it's mapping every single element so we don't really care about that, right? We really don't, we just want to check to see if any of them match AZ and stop right then. So if we want to make this a little more optimal, we can use sequences. So let me show you how to do that. It's as easy as this. We can just do this and say dot as sequence. And then we have to modify a few things. Let's see here. All right, so this is an error here. We can see, and the compiler is complaining about it. Now, why is this? Uh, flat map only applies the same type um, to avoid having, like, say, a list inside of a list, or in this case, a sequence inside of a sequence. And this is a list here. So to change this, we just say as sequence as well. And now everything should be good. So I'll check to make sure it still works. And it does. All right, so let's see what happens uh, when we run this. So we would expect the example to not uh, actually have to map every single uh, element in the sequence because that's just the nature of sequences. So we can actually stop early. So it's kind of hard to see how this works. Let's see if we can just add a breakpoint here, but we'll do it after it reaches that part of the test, because otherwise we're going to break on every single part when we're constructing the test object. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we got to this debug point. Let's go ahead and add one here and see when uh, it maps to state. So we'll advance, and here we go. Here's the map. And there it grabs the state. And it is done. So what does that tell us? So it looks like all have passed and it only had to grab the state once, once it entered this uh, function that we were testing. So we've confirmed that sequences allow us to short circuit our operation if we're only interested in like say one object that has a particular attribute or something like that. So if you want to stop processing your list early, you could use a sequence. 
And this is also important to understand that if you do not do this, every time you run a map or a filter or any of these operations, you create a whole new collection in Kotlin. So it's not like streams in Java, so you got to be careful with that if you have a large collection. It's usually like not a big deal if you have something small, uh, if you forget to add this. It, but it's probably good to add this in most cases where you're uh, finding objects or filtering and this kind of stuff out. Uh, you can have a little bit less uh, operations, and you can kind of optimize that way. Uh, but yeah, if you if you don't do that, it it does it is a little easier because you don't have to convert back to a list if you're trying to actually filter this down to another type of list, um, and you don't have that many operations, and there's not that many in your collection. You can do away with this. Because uh, at the end here, if I didn't do that, and if I say I really wanted to change this back to a list, I'd have to say to list. And it just creates another list anyway. So, stuff to keep in mind. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me on this uh, hands on exploration of Colin uh, collections. And uh, just let me know uh, what do you guys think of Colin uh, versus Java? And uh, what are your thoughts uh, below? And um, hopefully this uh, helps you get started on your journey. Uh, Colin is one of my favorite JVM languages. Actually, probably the favorite JVM language of mine. So uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, happy programming. <laughs>